going to share real quick. Hold on, I'm just sharing this real quick. Hi, hey, Hammer Time, how we doing? I guess I can't share it. Maybe you guys can. The only problem with doing the live stream, setting them up from the phone, is that I can't just go on Facebook and share it to all my groups and whatnot, so... It's not as easy as it looks, apparently. So it may be a relatively short live stream tonight. I'm trying out my uh, hand tools that I made. I'm going to try and make a church key style bottle opener. Get my bic ready here. There's the wedge for it. And there's the bic. All right. Hello, who's my other one? I know hammer time, so you're my second. Okay, appreciate it, hammer time. This will be my regular streaming time from this point forward, really, um, weather permitting. I almost didn't get to stream tonight because about 10 minutes ago I walked outside to get ready and it was pouring rain, but apparently it stopped real quick, so I'm here. Welcome back. Yeah, I think I'm going to do 6 p.m.-ish Eastern Standard Time once a week for my streams. We'll see how that works out. So I managed to fix my Harbor Freight welder, which was pretty interesting. Hey, Billy Strong, how we doing, man? I managed to fix my Harbor Freight flux core welder, thankfully, uh, with a little hack I learned on YouTube. Uh, I looked up how to change the feed wheels and that it was slipping and everything on YouTube. And uh, apparently, it's something to do with the spring that holds the two roller wheels together. It weakens up. So I was able to take my little clamp and slowly adjust it tighter and tighter around the two wheels. And now it actually feeds the wire again, which I'm very happy about. Because I'll tell you what, I'm utter crap with the stick welder. But that flux core make, I'm pretty good at it. So now I'm going to end up redoing the, uh, where is it? Hold on a second. This, this thing here that I made for my ribbon burner manifold. I'm going to end up redoing it with the flux core because it'll just end up looking better. And I figured out that in order to keep this completely square, I need to weld the sides on before I cut 
the hole in the center. Otherwise, this stuff likes to squeeze together, and then you get this this problem. If you notice, it's smaller up here than it is down here. So this one here is a learning experience. Yeah, try a um, either a set of welding clamps, or I just used a little four-inch C-clamp. Set it right on either side of where the wheels are and just slowly tighten it together. And it'll uh, push those wheels together just that little bit much more so that it'll feed again. I can't remember who it was that whose channel I learned that on, but it was like a small, I think he had like five subscribers, but thankfully I was able to find the video by very specific uh, search terms. So, my goodness, I had people here for a minute, and then they all disappeared. Oh, well, it happens. Oh, jeez. tonight. I think this is going to be a short stream. I don't think I can handle being here for too long. Hello, number two. I don't know who you are yet. Miss Penny! Good to see you. Hey, Billy Strong. Welcome back. Yeah, I can't afford those big welders, man. And I don't have 240, so it's tough. It's real tough. I'm running my entire shop on one 20 amp breaker from the house. And it's the whole shop is run by, hold on a second, I can actually show you. My entire shop is run by this extension cord right here. The whole shop. But, you know, we work with what we have. Get a few more people in here before I start actually forging. Steel's heating up in the forge. I was smart enough to start it up 10, 15 minutes before I started the stream, so it's actually warming up. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, I, I bought a $500 anvil, so I can't say much about that. I, I chose a real anvil, a solid, you know, will stand the test of time anvil over a welder I can't use. I mean, the, welder that I, the welders that I have work. I'm not doing production welding or fabricating or anything like that. So, you know, what they're designed for hobbyist welding is exactly what they do. They, it, you know, I can weld up to quarter inch with it without a problem. I've got to um, preheat the quarter inch a little bit, but it welds. So that's really all I need. I don't see me doing anything, any welding more than quarter inch anytime soon. I mean, I welded on that hardy shank, but that's, again, if you preheat your big steel, it'll weld just fine. Geez, only three people. It's going to be a short stream. I don't want to start forging if there's nobody in here and then have them come in and miss it all. Ha! <laughs> Yeah, right? 
Exactly. You learn real quick how not to run a good machine. Yes, yeah, see, Billy Strong, that would be great, but there's only one problem with it. In order to do anything with our electrical down here, I need permits and stuff like that. And honestly, I'm not that worried about it. I don't see anything that I ever need in the shop at the moment to take more than 20 amps on 120. So, and when I use my welders, I unplug everything else. So it's a, you know... I'm the only one in the house on that breaker, is the shop, so it's not that big a deal. The only other thing that's running power in this shop is the air conditioner, and that's run on a completely different cord into the house, into my room. So when it's in use, nothing else in my room is on. Ah. Uh, not this one. This one's a uh, minimum of a 20 amp dedicated breaker. It's it's the little 90 amp um, flux core MIG. All right. Well, if Miss Penny can't stay for long, I guess I'll grab the steel and start doing something with it at least. All right. I'll be right back. I'll stick you down at the anvil. Offset some of this. Woo, that's not working well. Come on, Tom's work with me here. Tongues are not being very cooperative. Ugh. They tightened up on me, and I don't really want to have to stick them back in the forge just to loosen them up, so. Alright, that's cold. Time to go back in the forge with that. I guess I'll stick the tongs in the forge to heat up the boss and smooth them back out again because they're not opening and closing the way they should be. Wow, this is not a very ex ex exciting live stream, is it? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Oh, I appreciate it, Miss Penny. Yeah. I'm... See, hammer time, the problem is, is that I'm complete butt at making tongs. And more than anything, it's just really frustrating to me because I should be better at it than I am. Like, every time I try to make a pair of tongs, so far, other than that one pair of wolf jaw tongs, which still didn't even work, right they just work other than that pair of wolf jaw tongs everything's come out complete dookie hey anthony kent good to see you all right those tongs are warmed up i think i'm gonna pull them out and try and smooth them up a little bit Thank you, Miss Penny. Uh, 
that's a little better. Much better. All right, stick them in the quench bucket and keep moving on. There we go. Now they're moving the way they're supposed to. About time. I don't know, I tapped them the other day to tighten them up. I think I ended up hitting them too much. But that's all right. They're better now. Oh, excuse me. All right, we'll do a little bit more on this thing now. There it goes, right underneath you guys. Oh, and if anybody's wondering about the efficacy of a plywood floor, that's what I have. I haven't lit it on fire for more than a second or two yet, and the second you pick the hot steel up off of it, it goes right back out. So, there's that. All right, well this looks ugly as hell, but I'm gonna try it anyway. All right, back in the forge and then I'll get the slot punch out and punch it and see how it works. Oh my goodness, hello everybody. Who did I miss? It's a try at the church key bottle opener. It's my very first try, Anthony Kent, so I can almost guarantee you it's going to turn out looking like a polished turd. Should have called this the polished turd live stream. I will probably make a legitimate video video on making a church key bottle opener that will end up being a much better demonstration of doing it, but this is my very first try, so you guys get to watch me fail live. But that's okay. Like I said before in a number of videos, every failure is an opportunity to learn what not to do. So failure is fine, and you guys are more than welcome to watch. Yeah, the church key has to do with the shape of it. It's got the, the ring for opening bottles, and then it's got that flat part. Makes it look like a key. And that's why they're called church key bottle openers. They look like old church keys. Yep. Howdy, Bob. How we doing? Oh, wow. Um, well, there's a ton of them on YouTube. Um, if you're looking for a tutorial, this is not it. The only tutorial this is going to be is probably how not to do it. I'm all right. Uh, it's my first time in the shop today. I've been busy setting up the socials. If you look at all my recent videos now, they got all my social network information on them now. I 
figure if I'm going to do this whole YouTube thing, I might as well do it whole hog. So I've got all the social networks and, you know, stuff like that. I got the Instagramble and the, the Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. All right, so let's see. Here's the old slot punch that I made before. I don't know if that video has come out yet. Has it? Have you guys watched me make the slot punch yet? If not, here it is. Um, that's the first step. I slot punch the hole and then drift it out to some size or another. I've got this, this drift. I've got another one somewhere else. I don't remember where the heck I put it, so I guess we'll use the half-inch drift. But, all right. Now, there's that. Let me go grab the steel. Put you down at the anvil. Let me make sure I've got live chat on. No, I don't. Sorry about that. If you've been There's that. Set that down there. Grab it, hold it down. Get my stupid magnet out of the way. Tap the hold down in. Set down the tongs. Grab the punch. Put you guys down at the actual anvil so you can see what I'm doing. started and that's cold again so back in the fire it goes also this is my very first punched hole so I've been drilling them for fear of screwing them all up when I make my tongs and stuff so this is my first punched hole my first church key bottle opener my first bottle opener I think pretty much everything is going to be my first something or other for quite a while now, but that's okay. No, no, Miss Penny, it's Instagrumble, because the minute you post something on it, somebody's going to grumble about it for some reason or other. What is OAP? I'm confused. Oh, did ya? <laughs> yeah, there's not much on there yet, but I set them all up, Bob. Like I said, I figure if I'm going to do this, I might as well do it all the way. I'll tell you, once I get a lot of followers on all these websites, I don't know when the hell I'm going to have time to do forging. I'll be too busy responding to people. Hey, Ulf, how we doing? I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was, um, what was that? The, no, it's still Instagrammy. Yeah, that was a great video. He's getting pretty good on that mouth harp, isn't he? So yeah, within the next week, folks, um, you're probably going to start seeing uh, interesting videos pop up on this channel. Me building and... Uh, modifying my air over hydraulic shop press. 
this coming Thursday, I'll be buying the 20 ton Harbor Freight H frame shop press and modifying it to fit my forging needs, which will be punching eyes, uh, squaring up huge uh, round stock and stuff like that. All right, it's coming out again. No hammer, you don't get to fall on the floor. Nice try though. Back in the fire it goes. Stick it in the quench bucket for a minute. It gets hot fast. It's only three eighths inch stock, so it conducts heat very quickly. All right, what did I miss while I was doing that? Oh, okay. Yeah, see, as long as, um, from what I've seen, hammer type, now mind you, I have no experience to back this up, but from what I've seen, as long as you make sure that your stock is the same heat all the way around where you're drifting, it should be okay. If not, um, quench off the part that's getting too big too fast, and then continue drifting to even it out. Now, again, this is just a theoretical knowledge. I haven't actually done this, but that's what I've seen. that shining is my bracelet. I don't know why. It's not that shiny. It's still got a brushed steel finish, but okay. It works for me. Yeah, that's weird. Hey, Ron. Rob. Sorry, Rob. I will get your name right eventually. How you doing tonight, Rob? Rob, Jesus, son of a biscuit. I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry. Rob, thank you. Now it's on my screen. Now I'll remember it. So how was your day, man? I saw you made a knot. That was really cool. You did a good job on that. Yeah, I know that feeling.
All right, Billy Strong, thanks for stopping, even if you don't make it back. I appreciate it. I bet, man. That sounds amazing. Oh, how'd that coal work out for you, by the way? I know it's a bit different than what you're used to. Hey, David. Nice to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, please hit the like button. It helps. Be right back, folks. Okay, as long as the blower made it easy, that should be fine then. my left hand when I'm punching and doing stuff like this on it. Alright. Now that's getting cold again. We'll stick it back in the fire. It's getting there though. man. Thanks again for that shout out. I appreciate it. Hey, hey good to see you. I see you found me on, uh, Instagram there, uh, yeah, I'm not going to even try to pronounce your name. The one who just came in whose name starts with S. I'm horrible at pronouncing foreign names. I do apologize. I mean no offense, but I'm not even going to try because I'll end up butchering the ever-loving Jeebus out of it. Paul, okay. Very good to see you, Paul. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. And I saw you're uh, following me on Instagram as well. I appreciate that. At the moment, I can't guarantee there'll be a whole heck of a lot on my Instagram, but it's there. Oh, I see how that is. Okay. Yeah, Paul is much easier. I like Paul. Although I can't say I don't know my own name backwards. It's Mataraga. Or Rada Maga if you're doing it completely backwards. Yeah, I much prefer Paul. <laughs> Sometimes I'm too American for my own good. Linguistically, at least. In all other things, I disavow America. But linguistically, I don't have a choice. They don't teach you more than one language, really. Not seriously here in America. I mean, you're required to take, I think, a year or two of a different language, but you never learn it conversationally at that point. I can say a couple of things in, in Spanish, but that's about it.
Race car backwards is race car, Rob. Um, some Celtic background, but no, I wear the kilt because it's hot as the devil's crotch out here. And the added airflow helps. this punch in my tongs because that way I don't burn the hoo-ha out of my hand and I can confidently hit it harder. Without worry about hitting my actual hand. I think it's about time to flip that over. Oh yeah. To heat it up a little bit more. Be right back. Oh my goodness, nine people now. Sign language is a good one to know, definitely. I agree completely. It should be taught in schools. There's a lot of things that are taught in schools that shouldn't be taught in schools. Give a little shout out to a non-blacksmithing related channel. Uh, Dave from Boy in a Band channel does a song called Don't Stay in School, and it's fantastic. It highlights um, a lot of the issues with the both the British and the American school systems. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out when you get a chance. I had to close that door a little bit more. It's getting really hot in here. See, that's the thing, Bob. You don't need to be Scottish or Irish or Danish or anything to wear a kilt, man. Kilts are a utilitarian piece of clothing. Especially in the world we live in now where you know, non-gender, non-heteronormative genders and non-binary and all that stuff. And we've got a cover boy for a cover girl company. And you know what? It doesn't matter. If you want to wear a kilt, if you want to wear a regular skirt, wear a skirt. Whose place is it to say you can't, man? It's a piece of cloth that covers your naughty bits. That's enough. 
I know very little sign, although I was learning at one point, but I know very little. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, I think every single student should be taught more than one language. Like, conversationally, at the very least. <laughs> nice, Rob. School. I'm old school too. I believe you should respect everyone. You may not like them, but you should respect everyone. I guess you could call that a progressive point of view. I don't know. I'm not about labels, so it's you know, kind of whatever. Yeah, I'm learning very quickly that I should be putting a glove on my left hand. There's a scale burn. These are scale burns. I got a scale burn here. I should, mind you. Now, notice the emphasis on the word should. I should wear a glove on my left hand. I don't. It's whatever. I figure I'm going to get enough of them over my career as a blacksmith. I might just well get used to them now. All right, back to the anvil. Let's see if we can't finish punching this hole. Well, it's there, it's just mangled a little bit, so it's kind of weeble wobbling in the hole, so it's going to take a bit to shear it out.
this out. in the forge and try to drift it. Ah, all right, sleep well, Miss Penny. that I miss here. Oh, alright. Yeah, the only reason this one down here is so bad it's because it got caught under the bracelet and I couldn't quick brush it off and dunk my hand in the quench bucket. The little ones are easy. You just brush the scale off your hand real quick, dunk your hand in the quench bucket, that's fine. If you're looking for me on uh, Twitter, you won't find What the Forge. You'll find my actual name. The links are in the descriptions of my most recent videos. That's a good question. Where is Beasley? He's usually here. Crying out loud. Heck with it. 
All right, it needs to be heated up again. Be right back. No, don't, please don't play that game. I would really prefer that not be what I become known for, another drinking game. If that ends up being a thing for me, I think I'll just stop streaming. I'm not about that. No, I can't stop you from drinking, but I can say if that suddenly becomes a thing where every time I drop something, somebody screams in the chat, drink, I'll stop streaming. Yeah, no, I'm, you can play it, just don't say anything about it in the chat. Yeah, I don't drink and I don't want to be known for promoting it. Like I said, if you want to drink, that's that's your decision. That's perfectly fine. It's your body, your life, you do whatever you want. But I don't want to be someone who's known for promoting drinking by having a drinking game related to my stream. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of the live and let live kind of thing. You know, you do you. It's your body, your life. You do whatever you want. Just don't involve me in it, and we're good. <laughs> I, I don't care what you want to do to yourself. That's fine. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Good to see you, by the way, Jason. Yeah, like I said, it's it's named specifically for the way it looks. It looks like a church key. And 
And I apologize, folks, but I am currently out of water in the workshop, so I'm going to run inside and fill my pitcher up real quick. I will be right back. Don't worry, I drink water. I drink water constantly when I'm out in the shop. side of it rounded out. Now we'll heat it up and do the other side. Yeah, don't do the exchange if you have any choice whatsoever. Yeah, I would set up a misting setup, but the only problem is I'm in Florida and my shop is enclosed and it's always moist here so if i was to set up a mister that would actually hit me in the shop my whole shop would be soaked yeah pretty much uh not so much moss though more of a mold thing down here
live in a relatively tropical climate down here in Florida and mold grows rampant with the slightest bit of moisture and darkness. And since my shop is relatively dark most of the time, it would definitely not be a good idea to get these walls soaked down. It's just closed cell foam insulation, so you get it wet and that's all she wrote. This other side here, guys. It's going to be a bit raggedy because, again, that punch didn't work quite as well as I had intended, but. What did I miss? Nope, nothing. All right. Y'all aren't very talkative tonight, are you? It's great to see you, Ivy. Thanks so much for coming over. It's all right, Dustin. I appreciate you being here. I'm just picking on you guys. Y'all are just so darn quiet. See ya. It is hot. My goodness. True enough, just like cold is relative, Dustin. Down here in the winter, 60 is cold. 50 is downright freezing. That's why I can't wait till the winter. Instead of setting the forge outside the shop, I'll stick it in the doorway of the shop and leave the doors open. It'd be much nicer in here then. Whereas up north, it'd be, you know, you're in the shop in the winter, but your forge is heating the place up, and then you're freezing cold, and you're wearing 
you know, 20 layers just to forge. Or if you forge outside, you just don't forge in the winter. Well, 78 with a breeze in my shop would be fine, but there's really no breeze in my shop. I really got to fix that. Give me a big old industrial shop fan that blows right at my back while I'm forging. That'd be beautiful. Of course, they cost nearly 150 bucks even at Harbor Freight. All right. Be right back. Just a little bit more adjusting to do on this part of the ground here. up again. Good to see you, Luffy. Hello and goodbye. Have fun with the family. Yeah, once you get acclimated to a certain temperature, it's fine. But if you're not acclimated to it, it's very uncomfortable. And I'm still not quite completely acclimated to summers here in Florida, at least not outside. Up until a year ago, as I've said in a couple of my videos, I lived a completely sedentary life. I was unemployable. I sat inside on the computer all day, every day. I didn't really go out because I don't like people um, at all, usually, at least not in person. Um, you know, and then a year ago, I got interested in blacksmithing again. Since I was a kid, I've thought about it, but never really got into it. This last year, I got into it and now I've been outside more. I'm starting to get acclimated. I've lost 20 pounds in the past month from doing this. So, you know, I'll get there eventually, but at the moment I am not acclimated.
looks about right to me. All right. Now we'll grab the ball punch or ball fuller. should be marked out well enough. Now we'll stick it back in the forge and punch it for real. a lot more weight although honestly this is the only thing I'm doing different in my life everything else is exactly the same I eat the same because I'm broken I can't afford to change and I don't exercise other than this so you know what I lose from forging I lose from forging I don't have any goals except to lose weight and become healthier and this will do it Very much, Rob, very much. I wish I had the motivation and the skill to make more of them faster because I'd feel a lot better about my shop. Right now, those are the only hand tools I have that I haven't bought. I don't want to use tools that are bought. I want to use tools that I've made. And that's one of the reasons I'm getting the press now instead of waiting for tax time because I am itching to make a hammer. Like, so bad I want to make a hammer. So, since I don't think I'm in physical shape enough to punch and drift a hammer all on my own, I am getting the press to punch the eye of the hammer. And I have a really nice drift coming from James at some point at County Line Forge. And I will punch and drift the hammer. And then I will make the hammer. And I will handle the hammer. And then I will forge with the hammer all the time because I will have made it myself. I have a dog. She's not allowed to walk the neighborhood. The neighbors get angry because she'll bark at them and attack their dogs. And no matter what I try, she still does it. So she gets chained up in the yard when she goes out. She goes out for about an hour at a time, and then she goes back inside because she's a vicious little crap head. My little chihuahua who tear other dogs to pieces if we let her. It's rather hilarious. She can be super adorable or she can be super vicious. Those are really the only two. She, she has no medium. All right, back to the anvil. I flip this over and flatten it out a little bit so it sits flatter on the anvil.
think I should have made my ball fuller a bit bigger. Oh well, live and learn. Try and draw that out a bit farther next time. Now we'll turn it around and do something decorative to the other side. going. I should have made my ball fuller a little bit bigger, Miss Penny. I don't think the little lip is quite wide enough, but it's coming out far enough. It just, I don't think it's wide enough to grab a substantial cap, which by the way, I will not be showing you the testing of it tonight because I did not get a chance to get to the store. It was raining and I'm not a big fan of getting wet. And besides, this one doesn't look anywhere near nice enough to use. So it's probably going to go in the uh, let's learn from this pile. That pile keeps getting bigger every day, by the way. Ah, yeah, that'll do that, dude. That is a very, very high, uh, let's just call it a very thirsty application for the phone. The hot spot. Let's do something decorative to this handle part. I don't know what it's going to be, but something. I did that on the wrong side of it. Son of a biscuit! God dang it! Try not to swear, can you tell? But there you go, Miss Punny. Now you can see. I don't think I made that ball fuller quite big enough because this lip right here I don't think it's wide enough this way to catch enough of the cap to work all that well I could be wrong but I don't think it is 
I guess I'll go stick it back in the forge and bevel the other side of it because I messed up and beveled the wrong side. <coughs> Be right back. Son of a biscuit, that's hot. I thought so. I modeled it after the one that we've got in the house that I know for a fact works. But I'd like to make a slightly bigger ball fuller for doing these. So I got my draw knife done. Now I got to work on some handles for my hammers because I need to rehammer or rehandle all of my hammers. My three pound cross peen, my two and a half pound cross peen, this rounder, they all need new handles. My goodness, Penny, you need to go to bed. What? Get. Yeah! Go to bed. I get up at 6 every day. If I can manage to motivate myself to get out to the shop, that's the best time to forge. But I get up at 6 every day. Try to get in the shop before it gets too hot. That's also when the noise ordinance officially ends around here, so I can beat on hot metal and nobody can say anything to me about it. Ten PM to six AM, I'm not allowed to make too much noise. Oh, I did more leaf practice, by the way. This one came out pretty good. Still not perfect but a heck of a lot better than anything I've made yet. It's even got that nice little organic leaf swoop to it. I like it. Isn't that nice? I'm so proud of this one. Like I said, it's still far from perfect, but when compared to, you know, let's see if I can find the other one. When compared to this one, huge difference. This one's cleaner, smoother. I like it. I do, however, like the leaf itself on this one better. Like the actual patterning, I managed to get the cross beam to get that nice little veiny pattern. But 
the actual leaf itself turned out really nice, the most recent one. Yeah, good old Penny able to make a leaf perfectly her first try. Grr. Some of us are not that gifted. It's one of my biggest problems is that I have this sponge of a brain. I suck up information like it's nothing. I have a theoretical knowledge of how to make almost everything that a blacksmith can make. The problem is translating it from here to here. Getting my hands to do what my brain says they're supposed to do. That is difficult for me. Well, that's not your fault that you haven't done any since, Penny. It's hard to forge when you don't have a place to do it. Be right back. I gotta grab the steel. Well, that didn't work out the way I was hoping it would, but we'll press on. There's the closest thing to a touch mark I have at the moment. Hold on, I'll turn the light on so you can actually see it. There's my very first mangled as hell bottle opener. So what you think? Did I do all right? Hello, Alan. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're a little late there, Alan. Yeah, there's my really messed up so far touch mark at the moment. Well, you're welcome to have a case of beer, Hammer Time. I will be uh, passing on that particular libation. I'll just go with my water, which I need to refill yet again. All right. 
So I had quite a bit of fun making this. Um, quite a bit of frustration too, but you know, it worked, sort of. It's a good starting point to move on to make more. I know that five inches of steel is enough to make a respectably sized uh, bottle opener when done properly. Um, so yeah, now all I gotta do is perfect doing it right. So I appreciate it guys. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, I think this will be a regular thing for me. Every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, until I finish whatever project I'm working on that night or two hours, whichever comes first. So, oh, I'm sweating. I'm dying here. All right, guys, I think this is going to be uh, the end of it. Make sure you keep a lookout for my videos. They are coming out every single day at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time um, for the foreseeable future. I, guess. I don't know exactly how long, but as long as I can keep it up, they'll be coming out every day at 6 a.m. All right, guys, have a great night.